It's the 46th hour. Farhan is there at strength camp and he's not actually hungry. He thought he would be because this is his first time. He had read somewhere in a scientific article on PubMed that doing this increases growth hormone by 5,000%. And so he gave it a shot. In the 46th hour, he feels Zen. He has written down his priorities and one by one crossed out the ones that don't matter. And then there are those at the top. And he knows that those priorities are more important to him than food. Then he goes in the gym. He looks around. He sees Shannon and Chris and Elliot, Josh, Danny, Mark. And he feels love towards everyone. He feels love towards the clients, his friends. He sits down next to his office at strength camp, next to the table. And he has a feeling of gratitude, humility. Understanding his place in the universe his mind is very sharp because over this course of 46 hours, he's trained twice. And no, he wasn't at the same strength level. He wasn't at the same intensity level, but he had mental acuity. He had mental alertness, focus. And although he's unable to do some deep thinking, or thoughts, he's, for the first time in his life, able to feel. Feel a sense of groundedness, relaxation, a sense of awareness, mindfulness that he has never ever felt. Even though he has been doing transcendental meditation since he was a baby, because that's what his faith is. That was how I felt during my first 48 hour fast in Florida when I was at strength camp. I had read all about the science of it. I had seen a lot of videos of it. But every single time I was giving myself permission to do the fast. Am I gonna lose muscle? Am I gonna die if I don't eat for 48 hours? And then he had seen his fellow brothers and sisters in, in Islam, the Muslim brothers and sisters who had been fasting their whole life during this month of Ramadan. Look, I was born a Muslim. I was born someone in the religion of Islam. But I never really practiced all the traditions of Islam, like fasting. I had never really done Ramadan fasting just chose not to do it. Personal choice. The first time I did a extended fast, as we say, it was a not 48 hour, but a 56 hour. I had set out to do a 48 hour, but I fell asleep that night and then woke up in the morning and I broke my fast first thing in the morning. That fast was very difficult. And I'm telling you this because this video is about intermittent fasting. This video is about extended fasting. We're going to get into the nuts and bolts of how fasting feels. I'm going to tell you some real life stories, stories that I have experienced, stories that my clients have experienced. And this real life experience will really give you an impression and understanding of what fasting really is because a lot of us have had years and years of fasting experience. So we can relate to what happens in the body, what happens in the mind, what is fasting actually. So that's what this video is about. I'm going to cover some real life experiences. I'm going to cover some science 
And at the end of the day, I want you to take away this. You have to experience a fast. And we're going to get to the challenge later. And in the challenge, you're going to know exactly what I want you to do in terms of an extended fast today. So let's get into it. And I will cover all the different points that I have been asked on Facebook messages, on the group, The Testosterone Truth, as well as on Instagram DMs, all these comments I used to get on YouTube about fasting, just my one-on-one clients who have done intermittent fasting and extended fasting and uh, the benefit that they have received from it. Now, before I get into this video, I want to highlight something. If you haven't signed up for the webinar, do so right now. Pause this video and go sign up for the webinar because on the 14th day of the truths, we will have a webinar and it will be a live call with me and I will answer any question that you have about masculinity, boosting testosterone naturally, the herb that I have been taking, this custom design formulation that I came up with and I've been taking this for five months, all about that herb. I'm also going to get into sexual performance, libido, how to have amazing erections, what exercises to do, what food to eat, how to get rid of toxins in the environment. And by toxins, I mean also people uh, that are hurting you, that are harming your progress and your growth as a man. Confidence. We're going to get into questions of confidence, about overcoming fear, about doing what you really want in life, about porn addiction, other types of addiction like social media addiction, how to sleep properly, all of these things will be addressed in the webinar. So if you haven't registered for the webinar, do so right now. And it's very important for you not to procrastinate on that because we need numbers. We need to know how many people were registered. We need to know how much bandwidth to have when I do a live call. I will not be in uh, Stockholm at the time. I might be in Stockholm. We're not sure. We might uh, go to another country soon. So I have to figure out the internet situation and all these things. So we need to have numbers right now. So please sign up as soon as possible. The other thing I want to highlight before I get into the nuts and bolts of intermittent fasting is tell your friends about these truths. Go out there, your colleagues, your family members, your uncle, your your best friend, your teacher, anyone who you feel can benefit from these testosterone truths, tell them. Please have everyone that you know take advantage of this. Send them the link that is available on the Instagram uh, profile. You will see that link that leads straight to the testosterone truths. Because look, man, this is free. Everyone, everyone, every man, every woman needs to see this. So let your friends and family members know. The other thing is, at the end of this video, I want you to give me feedback. At the, there's a button down below after the video. Click on it and give me feedback on this video. So these are certain... Um, sort of errands and certain things I wanted to get uh, uh, inform you about before we get into the science of intermittent fasting, the experience of intermittent fasting, and how exactly to do it. So let's get started now. The first thing I want to do is cover a couple of hormones that have been associated with intermittent fasting, with extended fasting, and kind of shatter some myths regarding these two hormones. The first one involves growth hormone. Now, growth hormone obviously correlates with testosterone. So if growth hormone goes up, there's a direct correlation with testosterone. However, if growth hormone increases in a study, that doesn't mean testosterone also increased in those people unless they actually studied it. Now, why is that? Sometimes the body compensates when a certain hormone rises, another hormone falls. So you cannot always just assume that if growth hormone is peaking, then testosterone is also peaking. It is most likely the case, but it doesn't have to be. So take out this myth from your brain. There's this thing in science called correlation versus causation. If something correlates with something else, that doesn't mean it caused it. So if intermittent fasting allows you to increase growth hormone by let's say 2000% or 5000%, yes, studies have actually shown that, Now, that doesn't mean that growth hormone will be maintained at this crazy 5,000% level. That doesn't mean if there is a correlated increase in testosterone, that testosterone actually increased in that study. It doesn't mean that at all. So keep that in mind. Yes, 
growth hormone increase is the reason I got into fasting in the first place. But the studies that show that growth hormone increases with fasting don't always show, and usually they don't show anything about testosterone. They're studying growth hormone specifically. Now, of course, as I already said, growth hormone has been linked to an increase in testosterone. It is more directly linked to fat loss and a gain of muscle mass. So growth hormone is something good for us. Now, obviously, too much growth hormone is not always good. Too much testosterone is not always good. So just because something peaks 5,000% doesn't mean it's good. So that's one thing I want to kind of destroy the myth that just because something is correlated with something else, it causes it. The second myth that I want to destroy has to do with luteinizing hormone or LH. Now, there have been studies which have shown that with intermittent fasting, luteinizing hormone will increase. Now, what is luteinizing hormone? What is intermittent fasting? Luteinizing hormone is the precursor to testosterone. So when luteinizing hormone is released from the pituitary gland in the brain, that hormone or those hormone molecules travel to the testes, to the balls. And in the testes, there are Leydig cells, and these cells have luteinizing receptors, luteinizing hormone receptors, LH receptors. And as luteinizing hormone binds to the LH receptor, testosterone is made. Testosterone is synthesized by the testes. Now, intermittent fasting has been shown to increase significantly luteinizing hormone. That doesn't mean that intermittent fasting will also increase testosterone. No, sir. I personally have not seen conclusive evidence that shows that luteinizing hormone will increase testosterone. Yes, there are studies that suggest it. They say that there may be an increase in testosterone with intermittent fasting. I from reading all of those studies, don't buy it. When I make a claim of science, when I say something like REM sleep is when testosterone is produced, that is a fact. That has been shown over and over and over. However, intermittent fasting, it has not been shown that it increased testosterone or it boosts testosterone significantly. Now, practically speaking for me, when I have done intermittent fasting, and now it's been almost four years, and of course during those four years, there were some times when I said, fuck intermittent fasting, let me eat seven times a day and see what happens. I experimented with myself. And I've also done my highest or longest fast, 112 hours, which I just did about two and a half weeks ago when I was in New York City, a few days before I left for Stockholm. So I will get into all of these things later, what are extended fast and so on. But just because luteinizing hormone has been shown to increase in these studies, that doesn't automatically mean that testosterone also increases. Why? Same reason. The body compensates. Another example, when you do testosterone injections, if you do them, then the body stops producing testosterone naturally. And we're going to get into testosterone injections in a later truth. But essentially what happens is there's a negative feedback loop. If testosterone is injected into the body, so now the body has pure testosterone, then the body tells itself that, hey, I don't need to now make natural production of testosterone, so I'm just going to stop. And that is why a lot of guys who do testosterone injections without the proper cycling and without the proper use of those hormones that don't stop natural production, because it is possible to do testosterone injections and not have natural production completely stop. There are ways to do that, but most guys don't do it properly. And so when that happens, the body stops the natural production of testosterone. Same thing with luteinizing hormone. If luteinizing hormone is increasing, there's going to be a compensation in the body and maybe there will be less testosterone production. Why? Because the body always tries to keep in homeostasis. There has to be always a balance in the body. So what you'll realize is this. When you go on your quest to double your testosterone or triple your testosterone, like I'm going, there has to be a very holistic, hardcore, inner progress, inner growth, inner, you have to tackle testosterone in a hundred ways in order to increase it and maintain it. I have maintained the doubling of my testosterone. And when I triple my testosterone, I'm going to maintain it. Why? Because every little thing that can be done to boost testosterone, including intermittent fasting, I'm doing it. If it's a certain type of exercise, which is for glute gains, 
I'm doing it. If I need to do extended fasting every few months, I'm doing it. If I need to eat good fats, I'm doing it. If I need to sleep eight hours every night and uninterrupted and get a lot of REM sleep and not have stress in my life, I'm obeying that too. I'm obeying every small little detail when it comes to boosting testosterone and I'm ignoring all the stupid stuff, right? So, you know, you, you ask sometimes, should I eat two bananas or three bananas at night? Well, those things don't matter. I don't give a fuck about that. Eat two or three, doesn't matter. I'm looking at the fundamentals. And one fundamental knowledge that you need to know is just because a certain hormone is increasing from a certain protocol in a certain study, that doesn't mean it's proven that testosterone increases with intermittent fasting. No, sir. And the studies that have actually shown these 67% increase in testosterone levels, 200% increase in testosterone levels. And I've read blogs of certain doctors. I'm not going to name any names here, but there is a very famous doctor on YouTube who talks about fasting and, and testosterone. And, uh, you know, he's much older than I am. And, you know, he's a practicing physician and he has his own website. He says some weird, wrong things about 4,000 uh, percent increase in testosterone levels. Then there's another YouTuber who is a testosterone, uh, you know, person who talks about testosterone. He claims certain things about increasing testosterone by this many thousand percent. No, these things don't happen. Of course, there can be peaks in testosterone levels. In a later truth, we're going to get into winning and losing and the winner effect and how that boosts testosterone. If you're watching a game of soccer or football that's going on right now and your team wins, of course, there's going to be a peak in testosterone. Of course, there's going to be a little boost in testosterone. But that doesn't mean it's maintained. That doesn't mean you're going to keep that boost forever. No, it peaks and then it goes down. Our platform, these testosterone truths are to educate you on how to maintain your testosterone levels, how to keep your testosterone levels for life. That's what we're doing here. These are certain myths that I wanted to destroy. Now I want to tell you about why I do intermittent fasting. And right before that, let me tell you what it is. So I've been doing intermittent fasting for almost four years now. What the protocol that I follow is a 16 hour window in which I fast. I don't eat. I drink water, I drink tea sometimes, I drink coffee, but I only eat in an eight hour, which I call a feeding window. So let's say your first meal is at noon. You are allowed to eat from noon to 8 p.m. and that's intermittent fasting. And from 8 p.m. to noon the next day, you don't eat, you fast. You're al allowed to drink coffee or tea or any zero calorie drinks like water, but that's it. You're not allowed to drink apple cider vinegar if you wanna ask me or or, or a lemon or honey, like, of course not. These are calories, so don't ask me shit like that. It's hilarious. Um, I get a lot of weird questions. No offense to you, it's just funny, so I'm just telling you. So that's what intermittent fast, that's a type of intermittent fasting. Now, another type is what I used to do when I was in Florida at strength camp, the story I told you in the beginning. I would, for five days, eat as much as I could, like heavy, heavy, heavy eating, and then for 48 hours, so two days, every single week, I would not eat. That's also intermittent fasting. It's just a different type of intermittent fasting. Some people have a feeding window of six hours. Some people have a feeding window of one hour. They only eat one meal a day. It's known as the warrior diet. And I've done that as well. That has worked really well for me as well. So I just want to tell you why I fast. So the reason I fast and I have been fasting for so long is because of stoic philosophy. I don't know if you know a guy named Seneca who was one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful person in the Roman Empire. He was a Roman philosopher and he was one of the advisors of the emperor Nero at the time. Now Seneca was what the modern day would call an investment banker or an investor, a venture capitalist. He would give debt, you know, he would have debt with people, he would give people credit and then he would charge interest like a bank does. That's what he was doing more than 2000 years ago. Now here's the thing with Seneca. He was the richest person in the Roman Empire, the richest by far. He had 500 million, uh, uh, they were known as uh, dinars, whatever the Roman currency was, he had 500 million of those. And he was fasting for 10 days during the time when there were festivities in Rome. 
So right now I'm in Stockholm. There's something known as the Midsummer. It's the festivities in Stockholm. It happens once a year and I'm lucky enough to be here for, for it. During Midsummer, so right now it's like 10 p, 9 p.m. and it's light outside. In Midsummer, after Midsummer in Stockholm, the day and night becomes normal again. Not this crazy, like it's light at 10 p.m. and then it becomes light again at 2 a.m. It won't happen anymore. So in Rome, the festivities happened during this month and what Seneca would do is during those festivities, he would fast. If you read Letters from a Stoic by Seneca, in one of the chapters, he talks about festivities and fasting, in which he used to fast for 10 days. Seneca was a type of person, he believed in being anti-fragile. If you have read the book Anti-Fragile by Nassim Taleb, Nassim talks about this all the time. He says, and this is one of the reasons I fast, you have to put your body into situations which it doesn't expect. You want to put your bodies into situations that are extreme because that's what our bodies are used to. If you're eating, 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 eating all the time, you need to have a detox. You need to go on a fast. It's that simple. So when I'm eating, 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 my body almost starts speaking to me. That's what's happening now. I'm so aware of my fucking body. My body will be like, Farhan, I need a three-day fast from you. Dope. And I give it the three-day fast. When I was in New York two and a half weeks ago, I fasted for four and a half days, 112-hour fast. I had never done anything more than a 72 hour fast. So this was like crazy, crazy fast. And you know what? It was easy. After the fast, I realized that we don't really need to eat food. So if I'm ever stuck somewhere and I feel like I'm going to die without food, I'm not because I've already, I've already done my five day fast. So I just want to tell you that the reason I fast is because the experience that I've already had with fasting has been so great, so extraordinary for my health that I keep fasting. So for me, it's purely through experience, even though I started because I had read the science on it. Next, I will cover the benefits which I tell my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients when they ask me if I suggest intermittent fasting for them. Now, for me, it's all about practicality. It's all about what are the practical benefits a person will have when they do intermittent fasting. So one of my coaching clients back in the day, now he's been my coaching client for two years and he's been doing fasting for two years. He used to eat really, really bad, like McDonald's, Wendy's, Taco Bell. He wasn't really exercising, but he was like, you know what, dude? I just want to fuck my girl well. I just want to be an animal when it comes to my sex life and my sexual performance. I don't really care about looking good or having a six pack or any of this shit. And he really wanted a hack, a real shortcut. So the first thing I told him, and back in the day, that is when I first started reading about Jason Fung. And I'm going to talk about Dr. Jason Fung, this nephrologist in Toronto, who is sort of my guru when it comes to fasting. And at that time, I had started reading Jason Fung. And one thing that Jason used to do for his patients is, let's say somebody had kidney disease, they had type 2 diabetes, you know, they were obese. He's like, go on a five-day fast. Go on a five-day fast. Shut the fuck up. Go on a five-day fast. And then we'll talk. And this client... I gave him this prescription. I said, go on a, not a five day fast, but a 24 hour fast. And I said, look, man, you're not, look, and it has to do with compromise. I know he's not gonna stop eating McDonald's. I know he's not gonna stop eating Taco Bell and, and fried foods and French fries and ice cream. He's just not gonna. But I wanted him to realize something. I wanted him to have that acuity. I wanted him to have that laser focus of his priority. So I said, just do a 24 hour fast. Just trust me on this one, just one time. After the 24-hour fast, he started noticing a few things. The first thing he noticed is fat loss. What happens is your belly, if you don't have a six-pack, you probably have a little like bulging belly coming out. I used to have that too. But even back in the day when I was fat with the belly, I noticed that after fasting, what happens is you start losing fat and you start losing water too. It's a you know, fat loss and water loss. And once that happens, your belly starts looking a little bit toned. It starts looking a little bit six-packy. And you also get rid of the inflammation that is caused by a lot of foods. Processed meat, sugar, a lot of trans fat, a lot of other bad fats that we are used to eating. When you start, and obviously if you eat a lot of protein, this bloating is going to happen too, especially with whey protein. And I'm going to get into whey protein and other supplements later on in a truth. But... The inflammation that is happening in your body, if you do intermittent fasting, if you give your body, let's say, a 16-hour rest or a 24-hour rest, 
now your body has the ability to lose fat. Because, so how does energy work? How do calories work? When you eat glucose or carbohydrates, your brain, your body uses carbohydrates, glucose, to produce energy. That is how you move. You breathe, you walk, you sleep. All of this uses calories. Calories comes from eating carbohydrates, proteins, fats, but the ready energy that you need comes from carbohydrates. Now, if you stop eating altogether and go on a 24-hour fast, what's going to happen? Well, you don't have ready energy, you're not eating, so now your body looks at the stored energy in your body. So where does the stored energy come from? It's called glycogen. Glycogen stores is where the body goes to when it doesn't have ready calories from carbohydrates. So when the body goes to get your glycogen stores and it uses them up, now what is the body going to do? There is no more glycogen stores. Now it has to cut away your fat. It has to burn your fat to have energy. That is when people go on a ketogenic diet or other diets where they're not eating carbohydrates and now their brain starts producing ketone bodies and that is how energy is made in, in these people. Now, I don't recommend the ketogenic diet. Please don't do that diet. It's horrible for testosterone levels from my experience and from the experience of my clients. Please don't do keto, okay? But I'm just giving you an example about how this mechanism works. So for you, if you do fasting, you do intermittent fasting, you're giving your body this window of rest where it can burn fat. It can go attack that fat and use that fat for energy. Now, if you do a 48-hour fast or a 72-hour fast, then your body's going to burn a lot of fat, okay? The people who do weigh-ins, the people who take photos of their six-pack for Instagram, you know, I've been guilty of this too. What do we do? We don't eat for about 48 hours. You lose all of the water. So now you start showing this crazy six pack and then you take a photo and you put it on Instagram. And you know, I'm gonna be, this is the truth. This is my truth. I'm being transparent with you. I've done it too. And so have other people. Why is that? Because your body will lose that inflammation, that bloating because you are fasting. Okay, so these are the benefits of fasting that I've seen. Now this guy, my client who did this first 24 hour fast, he saw his little tone in his belly. He saw that little muscle that is now showing it because of the fat loss, just after 24 hours. But here's the thing. He realized certain things because of the fasting. How? When your body is not digesting food, when your large intestine, your small intestine, your stomach, your rectum, all of these parts of your gut, when they are not digesting food, when they're not breaking down food, your brain and your body is able to do other things. Think about it. Say, for instance, a steak, like some very heavy protein, like animal protein. 30% of the calories that you ingest are burned just from digesting that food. That's how much your intestines work to digest things like animal protein, like a, like a steak or something. Now, I'm not saying eat steak. I'm not saying don't eat steak. You can do either one. I eat steak sometimes and sometimes I don't eat steak. It just depends on your body type and I covered a lot of this stuff in the food part of the testosterone truth so go watch that if you haven't seen it. But my client after 24 hours realized that his body looking good and the way he was feeling at that time after 24 hours was worth so much that he started decreasing McDonald's, decreasing Taco Bell decreasing Kentucky Fried Chicken. He started exercising. He started detoxing his environment. Just from that one day of fasting, he realized this. His priorities started becoming clear. He had mental acuity just after those 24 hours of fasting. And guess what? Over the last two years, he has been fasting every single day intermittently. He's been doing the 16-hour, 8-hour fast, and I'm so proud of him. He's lost 35 pounds. He is a fucking alpha male, fucking his girl like a rock star. Yes, he still has a belly. He doesn't have a six pack. He's not like some big jacked guy. But his sexual organs, his sexual performance, his libido is at an all time high. And that is the key, guys. I'm not here to tell you how to get a six pack. I'm not going to tell you how to become big. I don't give a fuck about that. I cared about his sexual performance because that is the problem he came to me with. Me. When I do crazy extended fast, I fuck really well. 
And right after I break my intermittent fast, I fuck really well. In the middle, if I half ass, it's suboptimal. It's kind of average. But the two extremes when I do those, right after I break my fast and I eat a buttload of food, right after that sex is really good. And during my extended fast, sex is really good. The rest of the time, sex is good. It's not fantastic. But those fasts that I've been doing over the last four years have been a game changer for me. And that's why I do them. And that is why I would like you to do them as well. I want to tell you about another coaching client who I am super, super proud of. This guy is also a neuroscience guy, neuroscientist, and he figured something out that takes people years or sometimes decades to figure out. Overcoming an addiction can lead to overcoming other addictions. So what do I mean by that? Let's say that you have a problem with porn addiction. If you get your body used to overcoming another addiction that is not porn addiction, let's say you get your body used to overcoming sex addiction or sugar addiction or gambling addiction or social media addiction, sometimes the brain circuitry, the neuroplasticity that happens to overcome that addiction gives you the ability to overcome other addictions that you may have at the time. And that's what happened with my coaching client that I'm about to tell you about. This guy was addicted to porn, big time. But he wanted to figure out how to go on NoFap, how to get rid of his porn addiction. But, man, it starts raining. Fuck. 